Sounds good. 307 take two. Okay. You set? Set. In your own time? <coughs> Okay, Mr. Anwar, how are we feeling? Oh, I'm ready to go. Okay, cool. So we got the results back um, and from the sample you gave. And I think we know what's going on. Okay, so what is it? Basically, you have a genetic disorder. It's called blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what do I do? Um, you need to rest, you take steroids. I, I can't rest, I've got to start this tour. Yeah. Soon, so what else can I mm. do? There is um, there's an experimental kind of therapy thing. Um, like the effect is immediate, but it might not work as well, so. So, okay, let's try it. Can I try it? Oh yeah, it will render you chemically castrated as well. Just a little caveat. So I can't have kids? Yeah. Okay, um, why did this happen to me? Well, um, we kind of find that it's very common with people with a link to kind of migration, a history of migration, you know. So it's your DNA is basically like, you know, it's not used to the new country, the new diet, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So why didn't it happen to you? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I'm, I'm more of like a coconut. I'm not really that into my culture. So what do you want to do? Uh, I, yeah, I'll get back to you. You can get back to me? All right, cool. In a bit. Is that too much? No, that's exactly <laughs> Such an perfect. asshole. Checking my yeah. phone halfway through. That's great. So what'd you say? There's a couple of try one just with street empathy. Right? So this is happening with street empathy because you are right. This is WJ. So what yeah. you're doing is awesome. This is your friend. Okay, okay. So more more love. Yeah. But that was but a it's great good you got that. Really you never know. That might just, you know. Yeah. Really. Um, still rolling. Okay. And spread positions. You set? Empathy yeah. and would apathy. You, just your mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just your mate. Yeah. And in your own <coughs> Okay, Mr. Anwar, how are you doing? See, so you've got a little collection going, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying, man. Yeah. Anyway, how are you feeling? Um, ready to go. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, so, listen, we got the results back from your sample, yeah. and I think we figured out what's going on. Great. Um, you have a genetic disorder. It's called... Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So what do I do? I mean, you know, you need to rest. We need to put you on some steroids. The rehabilitation process oh, is going to take... I, I can't really rest because I've got to go on this tour. So... Yeah, yeah no. Is there any other option? Okay, look, there is this experimental therapy. Okay. The impact, it could be immediate. Right. It could cure you. But at the same time, it might not work. It is a risk. Let's try it. I'm up for trying it. Okay. Yeah. It will render you chemically castrated. Does that mean I can't have kids? Yeah. Why did this happen? <laughs> well, basically, we find it common with people who are linked with... Sorry. I just picked that a bit yeah, up, yeah? Yeah, yeah Chris. Okay. Can we... Does that mean yeah. I can't have kids? Why did this happen to me? Okay, um, the, the thing is, we find it common with people um, with a history of migration. So your DNA is not used to the new country. It's not used to new climates, new diets. Do you understand? So wait, does this mean I can't have kids? Yes. So why did this happen to me? So we find it common with people with a history of migration. Okay, so your DNA is not used to a new country, a new climate, new diet, you know? Hmm. So, what do you want to do? Can I let you know tomorrow? Yeah, of course. Thanks, okay. Man. All right. Great. You got it. Great. Yeah. Up there. You sure with the pickups? Yeah. Um, for this take, I'm just going to move the clipboard for that, like that, for the whole scene. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and roll. Sounds sweet. <laughs> Three hundred eighty-two. I don't know. In your own time. Mr. Anwar, how are we doing? I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go. Got a lot of stuff here, I can see. Mm. So, we got the results back from your sample, and I think we figured out what's going on. What is it? You have a genetic disorder. It's called blah, 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 blah. So, what do I do? You need to rest. You need to take steroids. The rehabilitation process can take a long time. I can't rest because of the tour, so what else can I do? There is an experimental therapy. The impact could be immediate, but also it might not work. 
Okay, um, let's do it. Great. It will render you chemically castrated. Why did this happen to me? We find it common with people with a history of migration. Your DNA is still getting used to a new country, new diet, new climate. So what do you want to do? Just ask me if I've got, had any updates from Dante Smith or anything. Yeah. Just riffed out. Oh. So why did this happen to me? Well, we find it common with people with a history of migration. So your DNA is getting used to a new country, a new climate, etc. Mm -hmm. You know. So, what do you want to do? Can I tell you tomorrow. Yeah. As, as Dante called you or anything? Is he? Is he? I haven't been in contact, no. Does he do shout-outs? Could he do something for me? I've got a cousin who really... His birthday's coming up. Could do a quick video shout-out for me, maybe. I, 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 I can ask. Yeah? Or well, if yeah, he wants what, some free medical shit, I can sort that out as well. Like What kind of shit? Whatever he wants. Drugs? Morphine, yeah, whatever. For, I know tour life is hard. Well, what do you want the video shout-out to say? Just, you know... You know, just big up Dr Chowdhury, like... Cause I used to have a Rowdy Chowdhury, it used to be my old MC name, so if you could shout me out, Rowdy Chowdhury. Because, like, yeah, do or Dr. Rowdy Chowdhury. But let me know about the chemical castration stuff as well, yeah? Yeah. All right, cool. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Sounds great. Here, take one. Oh. Stop. And in your own time. Hello, Mr. Anwar. How are you feeling? I feel like you've got a lot of uh, collectible goodies. Yeah, yeah, family habit. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go, man. Yeah, well, okay, well, we have got the results um, from the sample. And... Information, right? Okay, so we have got the results from the sample. And... It's the genetic... Sorry, yeah. fuck. Sorry, keep going. Okay, so we have got the results from the sample, and I think we have an idea of what's going on here. Okay. Um, you have a genetic disorder. It's called blah, 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 blah. Huh. So what do I do? Well, you need to rest. We need to put you on steroids. I can't rest take... because I've um, got to go on the tour. So. Okay, well, there is this experimental therapy we could try. Okay, the impact, it could be immediate, but also it might not work. Well, let's try it. It will render you chemically castrated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as in, uh, no kids? No kids. Oh. So why, why did this happen? We find it common with people with a history of migration, okay? So your DNA is still getting used to a new country, new climate, new diet, etc. you know? Huh. So what do you want to do? Can I let you know tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Where should I live? I mean, anywhere but here, to be honest. This place is fucked. Last one. Last one, go. Great, yeah, one more go. Let's go for it. You ready? <coughs> Let's fuck around. Yeah, no, let, let's, let's, let's do one straight. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's do one straight. Just sorry, sorry. Right. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, ready? Ready? Is there a time? Mr. Anwar. Yeah. See that you're gathering some collectibles here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, how are you feeling? I'm, I'm feeling ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have got the results back from your sample, and I think we have an idea of what's going on now. Okay. You have a genetic disorder. It's called... Sorry, what? Okay. So what what can be done? Well, you need rest. You need steroids. We need to rehabilitate you I, and keep you... I, I can't rest because of the tour, remember Dante Smith? Mm, yeah, Dante yeah. Smith, yeah. Okay, we can try this experimental therapy okay. if you want. 
The impact, it could be immediate, it could be cured, but it might not work. Okay, but let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> it will render you chemically castrated. Really? Yep. So no kids? No kids. Okay. Yeah. Why is this happening? We find it common with people with history with migration. Okay, so your DNA is still getting used to a new country, a new diet, you know, new food. Huh. So what do you want to do? What should I do? I can't tell you that. You have to figure it out for yourself. Be guided in the can. Can I, can I just say one second while you're here? Yeah. Wanna yeah. say yeah. wanna say what what should I do? Say you could move and start listing places I could move to. Okay. And, um why did this happen? We find that it's common with people who have a history of migration. Okay, so your DNA is still getting used to a new country, a new diet. So what do you want to do? What should I do? You can move. You can go to Pakistan, start a new life there. Go to Bangladesh, go to India, you know, somewhere with the brown. You need melanin. There's no melanin in this country. And it's killing you. What did you say? You can move to Paraguay, Botswana. Oh, also, I've heard Taiwan is amazing and bounce. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Um, what should I do? Well, listen, you can move. You can go to Paraguay, Botswana, Argentina, all those places. Okay. Be by yourself, Riz. Anything you want to do by yourself. Try getting up. <sighs> this is after the chili walk, so anything else? Anything else? Could there be one where you try and get up and you kind of fall over a bit? Once I woke up and it was the middle of the night and I went into my mum's room, I was about six years old, I always used to go there and try to climb into bed with her and I found my parents naked and my mum was running oil over my dad's back and my dad was crying and I got so jealous because I thought my mum should only love me but she loves someone else, she loves another man and then my mum came in and said it's because my dad's dad had just died so that's why she was rubbing oil into his back.
273, take one. Uh, give me six. Give me a little And. Could you just, could you pull it? Yeah. Okay. No, it's here. Sorry, it's here. Oh shit, yeah, it's a tattoo, sorry. I thought you had something on your face. rock back and forth a little bit.
Can you do pussy fried chicken like a koala? Mara, pussy fried chicken ka sawal hai ye. Chicken ka story batao. Pussy wala, fry wala, chicken ka. Pussy go chicken Hum se kasam khao Hum se pussy fry chicken khao Tumare mu se batao Thank you so much for your film. I was incredibly moved by it, particularly for its portrayal of the real confusion and complexity of what it can mean to exist between cultures. And I really loved how generations were observed through the film. So from Zed and his parents to his siblings and cousins, his fans and his peers. Um, Zed's relationship with his father, of course, is a linchpin and a very potent reflection on generational trauma, but also of British colonial amnesia. And I wondered whether you could reflect on that for us in its very first London screening. I mean, I guess, you know, um, really appreciate your question because I think it does pick up on some of the layers, um, you know, in the film. It is on one level very much a kind of personal story, a family story, um, story about, you know, our desire to live as individuals and um, the inevitability of the realization that we are all actually a link in a chain and that chain is something that grounds us and anchors us and gifts us the heritage um you know of gawali music and a sense of place and a sense of mission uh, and a community that you want to kind of represent but it also presents the curse of a certain kind of burden and um, inherited trauma and, um, you know, genetic and societal obstacles. You know, those kind of themes, I guess, are all played out through these relationships, but you're right in that they, they come together um, most centrally in the, in the relationship with the father. It's interesting you talk about this idea of amnesia because, yes, there is a kind of amnesia in Britain's story about itself and about actually, you know, who, who built Britain? Um, there's this question that I'm often asked and it inspired a spoken word piece in the film of where you're from. It's at the moment where, you know, Zed is diagnosed with this illness, which is really an illness of self-identification. You know, the autoimmunity is about the body not recognizing itself and therefore attacking itself. It's this internalized dislocation, this internalized who am I, that comes back to haunt him, you know, physically. And in that, in that kind of where you from rap, it, it kind of like puts the question of, well, actually, who built this country? And so when someone asked me where I'm from today, you know, before I used to say I'm British Pakistani, when I was younger, I would say Pakistani, then we said British Pakistani, now I say British. And in saying British, I'm not discounting my Pakistani or Indian heritage. I'm saying that my, your idea of Britain needs to expand um, to stretch across the globe because mm. my ancestors built this country before ever having set foot here. Mm. And so there's an amnesia and a narrowness in Britain's idea of itself, but also in our idea of ourselves that we've internalized. And sometimes it's easier to have that amnesia. Sometimes it's easier to have a narrower idea of yourself than such a sprawling, contradictory idea of yourself, one that bears both the scars and the spoils of empire, 
you know, one that isn't simply black or white. You know, Ali Khan, who plays the father, his character is actually holding on to the simplicity of having, having a narrower idea of his own story, one that actually discounts partition. So this is, it's a collective amnesia. It's not just a British amnesia. It's an amnesia that makes it simpler for us to hold on to a, a clearer idea of who we are, whether that means we forget about partition, we forget about colonialism, or we forget about um, the good things at home um, when we're just trying to run away from it and do better than what we came from. One thing that I wanted to say is that Riz and I, we did a lot of research uh, when we were working on this film and trying to figure out what it is that we're trying to build. And I think it's important to kind of maybe even mention a, a few of these elders or people that have passed away that, that have been kind of important to our journey. And one is Sadat Hassan Mandu, who is this uh, writer in Pakistan who wrote a lot about partition. His stories are really sparse there. Um, they'll be like only two pages long, but they'll have so much going on in it. And I think so much of how we film the movie kind of mirrors that. And he's talking about this amnesia as the amnesia is actually happening. And the character of Toba Tek Singh actually comes from one of his short stories. And it's, it's a reference and also homage to him. So um, I felt like for us really leaning into where we, where we, you know, like, okay, what is our heritage? How did they in the past talk about these things? Because what we're going through isn't necessarily unique. And, and looking at stuff that we can use from our past traditions is actually kind of empowering and seeing that we're actually standing on their shoulders and we're actually continuing this, as Riz had said earlier about this chain. Um, and we're just this other link in a chain. So if we look back in that chain to see, okay, what is it that we can add and learn from as we kind of strengthen our own little, you know, little piece of it. You know, I just, I just want to add to that. It's so often, it always ends up to be that the journey that the filmmakers go on ends up mirroring the characters in the story. Mm -hmm. And just as Zed is kind of reckoning with his inheritance and his heritage and trying to reconnect with it, the good and the bad, make peace with it, realize that he's not just going to break out as an individual, that individualism's a, you know, a mirage, that we are all connected for better and worse. That's something, I think, a journey that Basam and I went on, you know, um, firstly in connecting to these elders that you mentioned, whether it's Aziz Mia, the Qawali singer, who was yeah. a big inspiration for me and a big inspiration for the, the Toba Tek Singh character, or Sadat Hassan Manto, or I remember a trip that we took to the Islamic Art Gallery in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, where we really just started kind of thinking about, well, actually, what is our um, artistic inheritance as Muslims in diaspora? You know, we often feel cut off from it as though we're these kind of like Mowgli's just floating, atomized Mowgli's floating around behind enemy lines, like disconnected from, from our inheritance and really trying to borrow from that in terms of how we frame things, in terms of how we shot things. And so we were connecting to that, but also in terms of passing on the relay, um, connecting to this incredible generation of, of new talent, you know, actors like Nabhan Rizwan, who's multi-talented, he's a DJ, he's a rapper, He's an actor, um, Hussein Munawar, um, you know, he's a spoken word artist. And this is his first acting job. Um, you know, Anjana Bersan, who's a singer, songwriter and actor. So in the same way that Zed was connecting to the past and the future and realizing, oh shit, I'm still linking this chain. I think Basam and I really had that experience in making this film. For me, the film functioned very much like a mosaic or a miniature, like very much inspired by that Eastern perspective in which you can't behold the richness of something in one glance and you have to go back to it. And there are elements, for example, the reference to Toba Tek Singh, which aren't explained. And so there are some people who will know, there are others who never will, there are some who will find out and might go back. And so I wondered whether you could speak about the kind of intentionality of not explaining everything as well. It's a balance. It's really tough because there's there's a question and I think there's that line between mystery and confusion. And you always want to, like as a filmmaker, you want to make sure that it's mystery and it's not confusion. Because I think at one point you can lose the audience. The audience is like, all right, I'm out of this. But when you look at when you look at some of like, you know, and I think for us as we were writing this and I remember Riz would always be like, all right, like, no, but where are you right now? Like, what are, what are you feeling right now? And I think when we were having that conversation, it was like, it was like, oh, I have to turn off this white gaze. Cause I think so much of the work that I've done in the past, it's always like, oh, what will, what will somebody else say about this? Or like, what will they understand it? But it's like, wait, am I understanding? What am I getting from it? 
So I think when we were able to kind of let that part of us go a little bit, or at least shut that voice off a little bit, um, I think we were able to kind of just lean in more into the material. And um, hopefully it goes into the area of like mystery and it's an exciting thing for us to kind of lean into. Um, and it's less of this confusing space, but, but, but we know it's a dance. It's actually down to Bassam's bravery and not explaining a lot of this stuff. And in fact, you know, a big part of this project was Bassam and I setting a challenge of like, what does Brown cinema look like? Arthur Jaffa talks about black visual intonation, you know, um, and Khalil Joseph picks up on that idea, the idea that black cinema, um, African-American cinema should borrow more from jazz than from kind of, you know, the, the white gaze of Hollywood. And mm. we kind of asked ourselves, well, what does our cinema look like? Taking the kind of the mongolized diasporic experience and, you know, um, setting that forth. So we had this shared palette and the shared mission, but we come at things often from such different points of view. <laughs> I'm generally kind of like, how do we make it crystal clear and really funny? And Basam was always like, how do we bury it as much as possible and go for the heart, you know? Mm. And, uh, and it's quite interesting. So yeah, hopefully, yeah, there are a lot of Easter eggs there for people to pick up on. But I would say it's down to Basam's boldness and bravery of like, no, I'm not gonna explain this. This is in there. It will function on an emotional level. If you want to go and then pick up on the Easter egg and go down the rabbit hole and see what all these references are, you'll find it. But I was, I was often nervous actually at times going like the kind of the, the, the Oxbridge critic in my head, the, the Guardian com columnist who's like turning their nose up at this in my head is going to be confused. <laughs> and like, you know, there's all these internalized kind of barriers we put up against just free expression. Um, and he kind of was quite punk about that, actually. Like, I think something to, to also say is that this, this was a deep collaboration. And, 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 and there were moments where I had to look at Riz to be like, okay, no, this is working. And I remember, like, there's this moment when we were filming the Golabnia scene, the first, sorry, the first time we see Chobatek sing, uh, it was in the mosque. And that was, and we actually filmed this movie uh, chronologically just to kind of also get me, because coming from documentary, I was, I was quite literal. And I was like, and, it's, and I think, you know, there were certain things that we wanted to do. And also Riz was losing weight for the role. So we try to do things chronologically. So the film's actually quite social realist in the beginning. And then towards the middle, we start seeing a little bit of the weirdness. So the first time we filmed the weird scene, I see Toba Tech, seeing the character for the first time, show up to set. And we're filming this mosque scene and I make the mosque feel very real. And then this guy shows up and I like freak the fuck out. And then Riz takes me aside. He goes, hey, you're freaking me out right now. Like, like we're doing this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're doing this. So it's like, and I think this is something that Riz had said earlier, and this is really important that this isn't a singular like authorship, blah, 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 driven industry. Like the reason why we're all filmmakers and I'm not a fucking sculptor is because I need people to help find truth, right? We find truth through dispute. That's how I find it. That's how Riz finds it. So we have to work with each other to get there. So the film opens with Zed's really potent lyrics and they circle back throughout the story and they gather resonance as well. But of course, Zed has to let go of his lyrics and accept that they'll find meaning or they'll find their place through someone else. Riz, I'd love for you to talk about uh, the lyrics, which are your own as well, but also about the brilliant character of RPG. So referencing also what you were talking about generationally and, and responsibility. The, uh, so the track at the start of the film is Mogambo and Bassam shot the music video to that. Um, we shot it together in Pakistan, in Lahore. And um, I guess it's in a way trying to set up the kind of the, the stakes for Zed as he sees it in his art, that he feels he is representing kind of an endangered species of his people. But actually his, his drive to represent is actually quite ego driven. And, and he, and he re realizes, you know, as the film continues that representing from this kind of place, uh, a me, me, me kind of place is, is limited and limiting and will, will be limited in its impact as opposed to kind of recognizing you are this kind of link in a, in a bigger chain. But in terms of uh, the RPG character, there's an idea at the heart of this film, which is about legacy. How as artists, as humans, how do we kind of leave something behind? How do we cheat death? And there's lots of different ways of doing that. And one of those that's explored is about having kids and about carrying on your bloodline and 
Another one is about your art living on. The other one's about your success making such an impact that you can kind of, and, and all of those kind of threads are explored in the film. Just thought it was really important to kind of have this character of RPG for multiple reasons. One is because he represents his next generation, his link in the chain, and will Zed, you know, be big enough to get past his ego and, and let go, let them be about them. So it's about the message, not the messenger. But also because it deals with this really toxic idea, there's only room for like one of us. You know, there's only room for like one brown rapper, there's only room for one brown actor, and there's all this kind of stuff. And it's interesting, you know, we were thinking about how we cast this role. Um, we were developing this film and the Informer came on TV, which is a BBC TV series that Naban was in. And everyone was talking about, hey, listen, you got to check out the show. You got to check out this new kid. And I was really excited to check him, check him out. But I also had a kind of like strange shiver of like, wow, like, like deja vu almost. Like I did a TV show called Brits in 2007 about basically a brown dude going undercover and, you know, uh, an MI5 kind of thing. And, and now 10 years later, there was this kid kind of, is, who's shares my name in part and kind of resembled me in some way. And I kind of saw myself in him and there was this joy, but also this kind of recognition of like, Oh, I'm kind of going to age. And he's like younger and he's, and I thought, wow, I, we have to take this feeling. We have to run with it. And so I said to myself, we've got to cast Naban in this role um, of, of, of the guy who's going to replace me. So with that in mind, I wanted to reflect on the energy of the closing sequence. It felt both triumphant and also cathartic, with a real honesty around acknowledging generational trauma. Particularly in knowledge of your documentary background, Bassam, I wondered whether you knew that this was where you were going, or did you find this to be your end point in the writing process, in more of a documentary style? I think we always knew that the film was going to start with a concert in, on stage and end with something happening in the bathroom between the father and the son. Um, the question of how it would look was uh, always like a, a big debate and we weren't really sure what it was gonna, what, what shape it was gonna take. And actually the way it was written was the father would just be outside the door and they would just be singing to each other. And we shot that and it was so lame. And it was the last scene that we were filming. Remember this Riz? Riz and I, like we had this like weird moment like where we like, we, we turned everyone down we're like, everyone just like, go away. We're running out of time. And then him and I are just sitting in this bathroom. I'm sitting on the toilet. I'm like, what are we doing? What are we doing? We got to make this thing, you know? And then he's like, okay, I think I have an idea. And so Riz then brought something that was so exciting. Where he goes, hey, Baba, just, just come in. And then the dad just came in and they both started singing. And I think some people in the crew were like, what the fuck? This is so weird. I was like, this is perfect. And then I think when we finally found that, we were like, we only have a few takes left. We got to just do this. It was, it was a huge risk that we took, I think. And then there were some questions even afterwards, like, do we film another ending, blah, blah, blah. But, but I think that to us felt like it was the right place for it to end. So we are, of course, in the middle of a pandemic in which illness, death and grief are very present and palpable. And whilst the autoimmune disease that Zed is struggling with, as you mentioned at the beginning, is essentially the body turning on itself, it also speaks to disproportionate violence towards black and brown bodies. There are structural elements to that violence, but there's also the weight of trauma and muscle memory. And I wondered whether you could reflect on that and the resonance of your film with what's happening today. Yeah, well, the idea of epigenetic trauma is something that we were kind of really interested in with this film. And certainly, you know, it's, it's actually kind of interesting when you, when you kind of look at it, like what is the cause for these higher incidences in, you know, comorbidities and mortalities amongst black and brown people and people of color, indigenous people, I guess for us, it was more this metaphysical idea, this idea of like internalized self-hatred or rejecting ourselves. Um, you know, this autoimmune condition is the identity crisis played out on a molecular, molecular level. You know, in terms of the pandemic and its connection to the film, obviously we made the film a couple of years ago, so this is pre-COVID, pre but it does strike me that the arc of the film is one that we can all probably relate to in quite a profound way in that, you know, Zed is this workaholic chasing worldly things. And, you know, he thinks that ambition and, and his job are absolutely fundamental. And then an unexpected health crisis puts him in a kind of state of lockdown, puts him in a kind of purgatory, 
which is the hospital. And it's in that hospital that he's forced to reflect on what really matters, which is your health and family. I think that arc is basically everyone's arc across the pandemic, right? Across this lockdown. And so I think in a weird way that this, this film is a kind of COVID film, you know, uh, even though it's not about that. I think many people will be able to relate to it on that level. And yeah, our, our hopes for the film is that it reaches uh, a lot of different people and on a lot of different levels, as you said, like, I think in many ways is a film that's quite hard to put into any one box, just like Zed, just like Basam and I, just like the complex identities that the film explores. And so our hope is that that is a strength for the film and that it kind of um, transcends the pigeonholes um, that our stories are often placed in. Wonderful. Well, here's to banning all boxes. It was really lovely to talk to you both and thank you so much for sharing your film with us at LFF. Big shout out to all the crew heading out to the daytime or later on up in Watford. It's gonna be massive. word in school, so I'm saying package. Oh, the fucking crew, you... Ah! Oh, shit, the scene, come here! Right, no, wait, that's it. The scene! You're this close to getting expelled. Is that what you want? It's just a word. It doesn't mean you can kick a teacher. Oh, it doesn't mean you can start a fight. Oi, the scene! Oi! Where have you been, man? I've been waiting. Oh, shut up, man. Just give me the money. It's just complete. Don't ask me stupid questions. You know, I move yeah, up. I need a tissue. Stop playing all the time. Cause my body's asleep. Yes, it's just a fuck. Why are you taking up so much room, man? Shut your mouth, bro. You're too much. Drink a drink. A little man. Yeah. It's your first daytime here. Oh yeah, yeah. Why you go out at night? Oh, is it? Yeah. Bounce off his ID. Oh, sorry, man. He's a little tiger. What's wrong with you? Allow him. I've known this family for time, but anyway. Hey, nice. Wait till you see them yachts, them man. Some proper little buff things. I ain't allowed that at night, trust me. I'll cut me, I'll cut. There's some jokes, bro. Oh, wow. Run, sir, run, dear. Oh, wait. Come on, put that. He's too young to be smoking, anyway. Shut your mouth, man. I smoke all the time. <laughs> <laughs> see, your man just told you what. Oh, man, told me shit. This little boy, man. You say you like that? Had a bit of. <laughs> oh, shit, man, you ain't had nothing there. Why are you even talking? I'm 
you saying he ain't gonna draw back out today? We look at fucking fresh in this fucking car. Oh, shut up, Gregory. That's like I was just saying. I caught her in a McDonald's in the alleyway, bro. Giving shiners to some guy. What? You being serious? Bro, I swear to God, it was all legit. Bro, yeah. last thing I'm hearing is she got packed off the Pakistan, innit? Oh, he is. Ooh. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Hey, yo, yo, what's wrong with you, man? I told you, no fighting six tonight. Just church, yeah? Hey, bro, bro. Hey, 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 b
need ID for that ticket, mate. You mean I need ID, man? I'm 13. You're not 13. Have you got ID? 13, man. Right, show me your I'm ID. Child fair. Show me your ID. I'm fucking child fair. I don't need ID. Not a chance. Come on, on your way. Oh my fuck off. I've been paging you all day. Oh my god, Nassim, what have you done to your face? Nassim? Nassim, are you okay? رب ناحت قبل دعا انکا انتا سمیع لگی 